Welcome to Doing Business in Rwanda. In this episode, we'll explore the exciting opportunities in Africa's food systems at the Africa Food System Forum, where innovation, investment, and sustainable growth came together to transform the future of food from farm to table. I'm your host, Derek Mohanji. The Africa Food System Forum, recently held in Rwanda, brought together stakeholders to transform the continent's food systems, with a focus on improving food availability, access, safety, and quality. Yeah, I mean the, the collaboration uh, between this growth-oriented private sector and uh, government is fundamental, because a big, one of the biggest drivers of, these, of this growth that we're seeing is infrastructure, both hard and soft. Infra hard infrastructure being roads, wholesale markets, utilities. Um, on the soft side is things like regulations, um, 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 ease of being able to move your goods uh, from the farm through to the market, which is often urban centers, it's growing cities. Um, the, uh, you know, the tax environment, your ability to import certain critical inputs that you may need, and so on. And where the biggest uh, surge is, is when this infrastructure is put in place and when there's dialogue also between um, uh, particularly small and me medium enterprises um, and the government to solve specific challenges that otherwise would go unaddressed. We must make sure that youth is involved with that kind of a, of a large percentage of a divide. And with mostly, most, uh, right now, most of the uh, farmers or players in the agribusiness ecosystems being older generation, then we must make sure that we are bringing in emerging leaders, we must make sure that we are bringing in youth, uh, the innovators, the change agents that we need to be involved in agriculture. So it suits the government to involve youth in agriculture. The Africa Food System Forum highlighted the vast opportunities for investment and trade in Africa's emerging markets. Rwanda, a booming economy, is a prime example of the potential that exists on the continent. Each year in the continent of Africa, we appreciate that 10 million young people walk out into the labor market seeking for job opportunities, and yet the Africa labor market only brings on board 3 million jobs. And so one of the initiatives that we're running at Agra right now is to ensure that we're able to engage more young people, specifically within the agriculture space, so that they can be able to get jobs and have a livelihood and sustainable livelihoods for them. First of all, I see myself doing a very big e-commerce platform in Africa. I think the largest. It will be like the Amazon for Africa, but in... <laughs> But in terms of agriculture, we don't, have, we don't want to do everything. Let's just have a niche. So I'm looking for key partnerships with African free continental free trade area. You also partner with people who share your, your views and vision. So I see them having a very uh, streamlined way of thinking the way I'm thinking. So African continental free trade area, which advocates for uh, a common currency in Kenya. Uh, we came here just to look after the partners who, where we can get some people who have the knowledge, who have the capacity building so that they help us just to expand because we have a lot of people. When I say open produce is about the big, big, big uh, commitment we are doing at the farm level. We have almost 3,000 farmers who are persons with disability, who are youth, and who are women. We focus on inclusion because we have been seeing that area is where people are forgetting and the people are surviving in rural area because there is no technology. What we did, we integrated also technology in them so that we can be able to do beekeeping well because we have a huge market in international. We are sending all the product to United States, Europe and Asia, especially Dubai and Saudi Arabia. Uh, as a matter of fact, during this, uh, f uh, during this summit, we have young people who are in farming, we have young people who are in value addition in agriculture. Uh, the fact is, if you start to look, you will find that there are a lot of youth who are in agriculture. I think the most important thing is how do we get more youth in it? How do we showcase those good examples of young people who are doing well 
so that those who think that there's no opportunity in agriculture can actually uh, begin to find it attractive. Uh, but for the case of Malawi specifically, I've actually found that a lot of youth who are in agriculture, the most important question is how do we begin to make it um, attractive financially? Uh, those who are doing well, how do we begin to uh, show those opportunities? Uh, how do we begin to link so that uh, you know, uh, those who think there is no opportunity can actually see opportunity? The access to information is very important and very critical for anyone who needs to engage in agriculture and especially for young people because for the older people they have the experience, the luxury of existing here longer. But for young people they need to have really targeted information that can able to guide them in the agricultural ventures. So Agra and many other partners have various information and knowledge sources online, you can check them out, that talks about uh, agriculture in general, the entrepreneurship. In Agra, we're running, we're running something called the Generation Africa Online Academy. When you get into that particular academy, you're able to, it's able to guide you in terms of basic uh, computer literacy skills. It will be able to guide you on basic entrepreneurial journey. It will guide you on various, in terms of how to grow various crops in various countries. And I think we have very many knowledge products that exist online that young people can be able to leverage on so that they can have the right information as they get into the agriculture venture. And I think most of these informations have been really packaged to be user-friendly, specifically for the young people. And some of them are really context-specific. They speak to specific countries where the young people come from, but also they speak generally to information and uh, various initiatives that uh, young people can run, those who are existing in the urban areas, those existing in the rural areas, there's a widespread in terms of database and information that can that young people can be able to leverage on to engage in agriculture. I think the key issue is not governments developing new policies. Governments implementing what they have. If they have special funds or special vehicles where youth are supposed to be supported, do youth in the rural areas know this? Can they make access to those uh, you know, funds easy? Okay? So government needs to make it easy for youth to be able to access, because most governments across Africa have a youth fund in one shape or the other. But I think the key question is the ease of access uh, of those particular uh, you know, funds. Now, but in cases where they don't have specific policies that support you, then obviously they would need to do that. So for example, the, you know, the, the country I'm currently working in, in, in Malawi, we have a national youth policy. So the policy exists. So just how do you begin to work with government to implement it, to ensure that the whole government infrastructure, different ministries, because uh, the youth policy is domiciled in the Ministry of Youth, okay? But agriculture needs to respond to the youth policy. Trade and industry needs to respond to the, uh, you know, to the youth policy. The Ministry of Finance, the Reserve Bank of Malawi. So it's just how do you ensure these other uh, you know, ministries you know, respond to it? Now, on the private sector, it's really around um, how can I put it? How can they be innovative in engaging youth? Because obviously the youth who are employed there uh, in their businesses, uh, whether it is in the supply chain or in the distribution chain. Again, let me give a very specific example. We have a poultry company in Malawi where young people can actually buy broilers and go and sell. But is that company specifically encouraging or supporting those young people to do better business? So when you go to a company, you need to find where is the opportunity to engage youth. Now remember as a business, the interest is the bottom line, okay? Whether it's a young people doing business with them or not, the interest is profit. So never forget that. So even as we engage with the private companies, we need to say here's an opportunity for you to engage youth, to create work for them, but that should translate into a profit to them, because if it doesn't, then you don't have aligned interests. So it's really finding different parts of their business where we can engage youth, and then how do we work with them for them to be able to develop those particular you know, programs uh, that can be able to absorb uh, youth. We are seeing a movement of youth in, um, in Africa around many economic sectors, of course, the most important being agribusiness. And so one of the things that uh, we're doing, a leader program of Agra called the Center for African Leaders in Agriculture, and our target is mostly the young uh, agents that are coming to change that narrative. 40% of the, of the Center for African Leaders in Agriculture, our co current cohort, are actually youth. So it's about changing leadership styles of youth. It's about bringing those new change agents in the different countries that we are in to make sure at least they are the forefront 
um, of Mekisho, that the youth that they represent in wherever it is that they come from in their communities are represented at the bigger table. Technology plays a very big part. So recently we, we are working with um, a company called Chapter in Kenya. Mm. So Chapter helps you to shop using your WhatsApp, right? So you don't have to go to to the website. Not everybody is IT literate or savvy. So if I want now cabbages, I just write cabbages. It will tell you this is the price. I want tomatoes, I want flowers, I want potatoes, I want this and this. You just write on your WhatsApp. It gives you the pricing of everything, but this WhatsApp is connected to our website so all the information that is on the website you can get on whatsapp the, just the way you you you'll text me is the same way uh, you can text and order and then it will give you a prompt right and you'll pay from the whatsapp from the whatsapp platform you don't have to go to this other side so you find i don't need a customer care work gets much easier for me, right? So we are promoting as much technology as possible. We also have drone deliveries. So we are looking into that. So we reduce traffic, we reduce more manpower, we reduce supply chain management and everything. So technology is the best thing that has been happening to us, yeah. And that concludes our coverage of the Africa Food System Forum, where we have delved into the transformative power of regional collaboration investment and trade in unlocking the continent's food system. I'm your host, Derek Mohanji. Till next time, goodbye.